What Happens in the Woods is a true crime podcast. We discuss events that are often violent in nature. Listener's discretion is advised. Welcome to WTF Wednesday. Half an hour of true crime stories. It's the finest in fuckery. Now here is your host, Jess, with true crime stories that'll make you say, What the fuck? Let the fuckery begin. Oh my god. God, you can't even contain yourself. <laughs> no. I love that song. No, it's it's very it's it's very well done. Yes. Good job. Good job for doing that. Barbershop John, thank you. Yes. Again. All right. Hello all and welcome back to the lighter side of true crime here at What Happens in the Woods. We've got everybody with us, so Hello, Olivia. Hello, Mara. Hello. Hello. Of course, we had to bring the girls back because they are a part of this fuckery. Of course. (laughs) course. So we're excited to bring this series back to you in all of its finery. Uh, We want this to be interactive with you guys. So please send us your suggestions. Any true crime related odd stories. They can be from anywhere. It doesn't have to be a Pacific Northwest thing. So doesn't have to be even in the Washington state or the United States. We want your crazy local stories. We want, you know, weird laws, just plain stupid criminals, anything you got. Bring it to us. All right. And one announcement I have. Do you have any announcements, Bryce? No. No announcements? No. Okay. So while we're talking about all things what the fuck, consider this your official notification that we have WTF merch. So merch is a thing that we're going to pretty much regularly have moving forward. So the logo tees had a good run. They'll make their way back in the future. But right now, at this moment, we are living the what the fuck life. And we want you to as well. So there is some that is not explicit for, you know, anybody who doesn't have comfort with the fuck words. I didn't I didn't want to make merch that had the F word all over it. So depending upon your level of comfort with the fuck word, have fun with it. Let us know what you guys think of it, but enjoy. All right. Woo-hoo. Do you guys have any announcements, girls? You ladies? No. I'm tired. So. <laughs> tired. Okay. All right, then are we ready to get into all of this fuckery? Yes. Give me the fuckery. Let's go. First on the list for discussion is a story that recently broke in the news that the band Nirvana is being sued over album artwork cover. And this is going like this artwork goes back 30 years that came out in 1991. So I think pretty much everybody, even younger generations are going to recognize this album cover in question. It's the one with the naked baby yeah. on it. He's swimming in a pool and then there's a dollar bill that's like on a fishing line in front of him. Yeah. yeah. Do you okay? So this, I mean, that album is probably one of the most recognizable, also like iconic covers for an album of all time. I would say. So that baby obviously he's grown up, and he has a problem with his private parts being out there for everyone on that album to see. It was so long <laughs> ago. I, I mean, it, I, yeah. yeah. So Spencer Eldon has entered a lawsuit against the band members, including the estate of the late frontman uh, Kurt Cobain and others associated with them, totaling 15 people. He is seeking a minimum of $150,000 per person. So $2.25 million in, like, as a minimum, citing that the use of the picture is child sexual exploitation. Oh, my gosh. There was a remark from a lawyer in an article that I read also stating that the dollar bill on the cover makes it seem as if the baby is being propositioned for child (laughs) prostitution. Oh, my God. It's they're really going hard with this. So, I mean, art is subject to interpretation. Sure. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Um. This, for anybody who doesn't know this album, like I said, it was a big fucking deal. Every like grunge, punk rock, alternative person in the 90s knew this band. Even people who were not into that music 
yeah. knew this band, knew like when Teen Sm- um, Smells Like Teen Spirit came out, I had never, th- that is not on my radar. I was straight <laughs> like R&B yeah. until, until like some of this music came out and it, it was everywhere. MTV had it playing all the time. The video was, music video was on all the time, like yeah. every 20, 30 minutes. And I mean, it was, yeah, it, it was this album the, blew up the radio. Yeah. Mind um, you, mind you guys, ladies, <laughs> there was no streaming services back then. No, we was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, um, so, I mean, this album put, put them on the map, but it also oh, yeah. put like the, the lifestyle, the music, the, uh, you know, the lesser known bands that were, Holding their own and, you know, yeah, and local scenes. weird local yeah. scenes. Yeah. But they it was it was kind of bringing attention to them. People were trying to find the next Nirvana. Oh, they yeah. were trying to f- search for this. So, um, of course, most people know everybody up here knows Kurt Cobain and the uh, um, bass guitarist Chris Novoselic. Basically, the two founders of the band, they went to school together here in Washington in Aberdeen. And their roots are everywhere here in Seattle. And that's kind of why I like this is the grunge capital yeah. of of the world, essentially, um, especially during that time. So you imagine like I'm, I say this for anybody who doesn't know the backstory, but also with that in mind, you can imagine the kind of money that this album brought to these people. Yeah. And anybody associated with it. So Eldon claims that neither he nor his family have received any of that money in exchange for this photo. I mean, was that part of the contract? Well, they didn't have a contract. See? So there's some weird stuff. Um, so his dad stated in an interview with NPR that the photographer, who was a family friend, gave them $200 to do a photo shoot. And it was just kind of during a pool party that they were throwing. Next thing they know, their kid's on the cover of a record album that's just off the charts. Like it's everywhere. Yeah. And they claim that there was no consent given for the photo to be used, no release signed. Oh, really? But in my I heard, very yeah. limited knowledge of the law, they were paid two hundred dollars for the photo. That yeah. then becomes the photographer's property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I as far as I understood, if they accepted two hundred dollars for this photo shoot, then you accepted two hundred dollars to be paid. And you no longer had any connection with it. Yeah. It sucks that it was only $200, but again, you accepted it. So, and, and if you accepted it, then at the time you were okay with your naked baby being photographed, you know? Yeah. They're just fishing for money. Kind of what it, yeah. yeah, Kind of what it comes down to. There's just a lot of like statements. So, you know, there's also statements that Eldon and his father made um, at various interviews and times that there would be a, uh, they were told that there was going to be like a sticker or something covering his genitals on the, on the record album, but that never happened, yeah. obviously. So what I find interesting is Eldon has participated in like anniversary reenactments of this photo cover yeah, at like the fifth, the 10th and the 25th and 25th anniversary. So basically him in a pool with, you know, swim shorts on, but he's in the pool re- recreating this. Yeah. He's done it multiple times. So why is he suing? What's like, why? What the fuck? Well, so give me, I'll get to that. So like I said, he's done, you know, these reenactments, right? And up until recently, he thought the photo was bringing him opportunities that he may not have had otherwise. But as he got older, he states, quote, his true identity and legal name are forever tied to the commercial sexual exploitation he experienced as a minor, which has been distributed and sold worldwide from the time that he was a baby to the present day, end quote. Eldon claims because of this, he has suffered, quote, extreme permanent emotional distress. Even talking about how when he's in public, all he can think about is how everyone around him has seen his, quote, little baby penis. Yeah, but he's not a little baby anymore. So, I mean, that's kind of it exactly. Um, there's also this article in GQ Australia where Eldon basically says his feelings on the group and the photo turned sour 
after the band blew off an art showcase he was in. This is in 2016, so just recently. Yeah. Um, He's quoted as saying, I was getting referred to their managers and their lawyers when asked if they would want to participate or, you know, even enter in some artwork in the show that he was doing. And he's, he questions, why am I still on their cover if I'm not that big of a deal? What, why do you think if, you're that big of a deal? Would he complain if they, if they took him off? Probably. That's the thing. Where, where are you going to be happy at this point? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was looking into this, I found out that this is actually not the first time that the band has been involved in a lawsuit regarding artwork used on their covers. Yeah. Mind you, they only put out three albums from what I understand. Yeah. I don't understand how you can only have three albums and have been, I mean, I guess there's like the singles could have different artwork. I don't, I don't know. So back in May of this year, it was reported that the sole survivor of C.W. Scott Giles, who illustrated a version of Dante's Inferno. This is very like way back in the day, 1949, when this illustrated English version of Dante's Inferno came out. So the only living survivor is suing for copyright infringement uh, over artwork that looks very similar to illustrations from that book. Yeah. They claim that this artwork has been used all over merch and that the band and studio execs have falsified the copyright info as giving credit to Nirvana, even inferring that Kurt Cobain like drew this or conceptualized it. And there's also a article to Rolling Stone that I'll link that I found, you know, throughout this searching going back a couple years in 2018, the band sued fashion designer Mark Jacobs over the use of uh, their smiley face oh. in his uh, Redux grunge collection. But in 2020, a graphic artist by the name of Robert Fisher filed a motion stating that he was actually the person who created that logo. So why are they suing? Yeah. And it's still like an ongoing thing to figure out like who really is, is responsible for this artwork. So they've, they've had some issues with their artwork before. And I think he's just maybe trying to, get in on that like i i understand where this guy's coming from like i can't contradict his feelings on knowing that you're as he says his little baby penis is out there for everybody to see and everybody in the world has seen that damn album cover yeah but if you don't want the limelight i think you'd perfectly you'd be perfectly capable of not getting the limelight in this case nobody's gonna recognize you yeah because he's now putting himself in the light right because he wanted I, I think that brings up a whole different issue, though. Sh- like, and it sounds really silly, but should you be taking nude pictures of your children? Because in a way, like, yeah, everybody gets the bathtub photo, blah, blah, blah. That's whatever. But taking a nude photo of your baby, like, especially in this case, they they didn't consent to that. And then the parents didn't consent to it being out there. Now it's out there forever. And this kid has his, you know baby penis everywhere but as an adult like it it would be the same thing if they took a picture of him and his penis was out there people would be entirely upset about it but since he's a kid it's like oh it's cute it's whatever but if it was an adult with their penis out there everyone would be flipping out like nobody would be cool with it it just begs the question like should you be taking those type types of pictures and should they be like out there for people to see i mean you're you're not wrong i'm not i'm not disagreeing with that i'm my i think we're my, I don't, not confusion. I don't, I don't know, but where I'm kind of caught up is at some point you were getting the recognition from it and you thought it was cool. And now all of a sudden you're not famous from it anymore enough. And now it's not cool. I guess. Yeah. I just, I just That's, think at the same time, it's just, it's a really weird situation. I just don't know and why. I would never know how I would feel in that situation. No, I, I'm not, and I'm not saying that he doesn't have the right to change his mind either. Yeah. But at what point were you like, yeah, I guess this is not okay. And is it because you're not getting paid enough? If you had been getting compensated this whole time, would you have had an issue with it? Knowing that that is, yeah, you from 30 years ago. I would, I would still think it's weird even getting paid for it. Yeah. That's a weird feeling. I especially. just also, like, if the parents say that they were told that there was should have been a sticker or, like, a little, you know, black marker or, or something in that area, or the photo should have been cut off, because now when they're showing it in art- articles, it's, like, it's cut off. Like, they don't show, like, the lower part 
of the picture where his genitals would be. They kind of just cropped the photo to that. I thought at some point, too, that they had taken that off. I think there were some versions that had it off, like the edited album, you know, the. Yeah, there might have been. But I mean, his version, if if that's the case, then you can't go back and unsell what what sold with it. You you can't. But why if it. I guess it kind of begs the question, like. Why didn't his parents, if they were told there was going to be that was going to be covered, why didn't they go back and and sue then? Yeah. You know. If you're well, told, because I mean, obviously now, they had a concern. It's his, it's his decision now as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. But the parents have stated that they, they were told that that was going to be the case. It was going to be covered up or a sticker was going to put, be put in that place. If you were told that and it didn't happen, should you not have, have pursued saw, it? Then. Yeah. Pursued it then, you know, why, why now all of a sudden, and he even freely admits that, you know, oh yeah, I kind of soured on the band. Like I, I got a bad taste in my mouth from the yeah. band when they basically ignored me when I was trying to do this art show. I mean, I would too. <laughs> I mean, yes, but you, you also have to think like when they're not doing what they're doing for a living, they have families, they have other obligations and maybe they could not have come. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, I think from the point of someone who feels like they've been exploited, yeah, it's like, you know, he's creating that narrative in his head. It's like, well, damn, like they don't even care anymore. Yeah. No, I, I, and that's kind of where I, I would lean towards actually. I, I would not be okay with my children's naked body as an infant being put out there for everybody to see. I wouldn't. It's yeah. It's one thing, like you said, like the naked bath time photos and everything. But I think I I think at the time I would have been like, yeah, I'm not going to sell m- my photos to you <laughs> for yeah. $200. It's just a weird situation. Like, yeah, what how that came about and especially how it just, you know, one day it pops up and it's like, oh, that's my kid right there on right. that album. And I, I think I think there are plenty of people in this world who'd be like, yeah, that was me naked as a kid. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, it, it doesn't matter now. Like, I I think there are plenty of people who are, um, I don't want to say okay with their bodies, but they're just, they're comfortable and it doesn't affect them. It doesn't bother them. Yeah. I to just have that don't exposure. understand because like he could have just stayed in the dark with it. Like he didn't have to be reenacting the photos and he didn't have to. But he was okay with it at the time. There. Yeah. But if he thought about the consequences, basically he would have known like he was going to get angry about it. That's the thing is you're allowed to change your mind. Too. Yeah. You're I allowed mean, to change yeah, your mind. I'm and, not saying that. I'm and he was getting like, opportunity like he, cause he, he is an artist. So there were things that this kind of opened the door for him um, from people who may not have, I don't want to say recognize his name cause I didn't know his name until this happened, but maybe didn't, um, you know, somehow it came up in conversation or somehow it was found out and they're like, Oh yeah. Hey, that's you. Let me see your artwork. Like he was getting some yeah. doors open from him and yeah, that's, you kind of feel at that point it's a fair exchange. Yeah. And now he, he no longer obviously feels that it's a fair exchange, you know, that he, he has not reaped the benefits of something that he wasn't necessarily, he didn't, first of all, consent to it. His parents kind of halfway consented to it. And then now he's an adult and there are things that bother him about it. It's just. Yeah, I I thought it was interesting because, you know, at what point do we say, yeah, you can't change your mind anymore? He could be 70 years old and this bother him and all of a sudden he wants to sue. I don't know. It was just an interesting, interesting what the fuck. All right, moving along. Our next fuckery comes from Louisiana. We're in the town of Kenner. Two female teachers were accused of having inappropriate sexual relations with an underage student. This one, I, I, it's, I mean, it's straightforward until it's not. So, so just wait. So the first story began going around the school. It was in 2014 uh, after a 16 year old male was bragging around school that he and two female teachers had had a threesome basically after a football game at one of the teacher's homes. 
Apparently there was photos, there was videos. Um, He was showing them around to his other, like his teammates on the football team in the locker room to kind of prove to them that he was having a relationship with the teacher. And news, of course, spreads like wildfire. So the first to be arrested and charged was 34-year-old Shelly Dufresne. She uh, was his English teacher at the time. And she was arrested, held on felony charges of carnal knowledge of a juvenile, indecent behavior, and contributing to delinquency of a minor. Her bail was set at $200,000. After her release, she was put on a like modified house arrest. And she, I read that she was uh, having to like show proof that she went to treatment for mental, mental illness issues. And then a couple of days after that, the second teacher turned herself into the police. She, I mean, pretty much she knew it was only a matter of time before they were going to be knocking on her door. So she lawyered up and went to the um, jail, you know, turned herself in. So 24-year-old Rachel Respes, she was also arrested on the same charges, held on the same amount of bail. And authorities alleged that it was her apartment where the three engaged in group sex after that football game. Which, mind you, every article I read was like, oh, and the high school won the game and showed the score. <laughs> like, that was the biggest yeah. fucking deal. The, right? um, the yeah, story's it was, secondary. It was in parentheses almost all the time. Like, oh, after the, you know, at the, after the football game when these people moved up and then be in parentheses, which the high school easily won 47, 41 to seven. Um, it, yeah. I, I was like, who the fuck cares? And who he cares? scored two. And he was, yeah, probably. <laughs> Are they trying to like justify it? Jesus Christ. I don't know. Like, oh yeah. And by the way, for anybody who's, you know, keep track of the high school scores, here you go. Um, so both ladies were suspended without pay, you know, pending their trials and in the investigations. So, In an update to this, in April of 2017, when the trial started, the student testified he was at that point 19 years old. He testified at the trial for Dufresne. She waived her right to a jury trial, so it was trial by judgment. And at that time, the student disclosed a lot of details of the supposed relationships, how they began. And he claims that Dufresne and he began an affair Like a month prior to this, the two kissed at school one day and then Dufresne set up a fake Facebook account. And that's how they kind of communicated from there. She set it up under the name Madison Mexicano and posted I love Mexican boys all over the page with pictures of Speedy Gonzalez. And mind you, the kid says that he was highly offended. He's uh, Hispanic culture. He says he was highly offended by all of this, but still was okay with a, you know, fucker basically to have sex with her. Yeah. I don't know. So that's how they would communicate back and forth. The two, um, you know, they lasted, it was about a month leading up to the night of this football game where the high school won, by the way, um, when (laughs) Respes came into the picture, apparently she knew the relationship and she didn't turn in the other teacher. She also offered her apartment as a place for the two to have sex. Then after becoming intoxicated, she joined in. Oh, my God. So the 19-year-old then told the court that he took photos and video of the 24-year-old. So Respes, while she was sleeping, she um, is, you know, obviously drunk. And uh, mind you, the other thing that came up whenever I looked at any of these articles was how the student was traumatized after a nine-hour long group sex therapy session or group sex session. Like he was traumatized after these nine hours of sex with these teachers. And I I was like, why do we need to know how long it went? Like I, oh it's God. again, like where you're putting the importance on the wrong things, uh, yeah. but we won the football game, but they won the football game. Right. Had nine hours of sex and had nine hours of group sex. So she's passed out. He decides that he's going to um, take pictures and video with his genitals on her so that he has proof. Of course he had to teabag her. Right. (laughs) So 
Because he wanted proof. He wanted to take it to the boys in the locker room, and he wanted to prove that, you well, know. How do you God. prove that? Then he has to whip it out to all his friends. See, it's this is It's the locker mine. room. I'm serious. Like, how do you prove that? <laughs> That's so... It's the locker room. I'm sure that people, they shower after games. I'm sure people have seen his dick. I don't know. Am I allowed to say TMI. that? He, no, TMI. he's an adult now. I'm sure that, that the boys have seen his genitals. I, it's just, it's, Yeah. So he says he did this for payback because of an incident that he had had in her classroom a year prior. So she was his teacher in his sophomore year. He also was going to use it to, like I said, prove that he had uh, slept with her. He was going to use it to blackmail her later, but decided to delete it all. So Dufresne's um, defense also alleged that he blackmailed her when she tried to get him transferred out of her class. Um, stating he had photos and he was going to report her if she didn't get um, if, if she didn't give him good grades, basically. Yeah. So I want I want as little participation in the class. I don't want to have to do homework. I don't want to do group projects. I want, you know, good grades. And otherwise, I'm going to tell anybody I can that this happened. And, you know, basically he he's using this information to get cred and to get an easy a out of her class. What um, I also found interesting was one of the articles mentioned that he was only four days um, shy of being 17. And at that point in the state of Louisiana, he would have been a consenting person of age. So he was just a few days shy of that. So they, they basically her defense team claims that he orchestrated the entire thing and then he did it intentionally like the affair and then the threesome, like he, they're saying that he orchestrated all of this. Yes. The so 16 can, year old mastermind. I That's what know. I was going to say. Like not to say yeah. that teenagers can't do that, but it's just like right. he was, he had the foresight to just like, Oh, I know what I'm going to do this year to get, I mean, grades. you ma'am, you went maybe. to college, right? You got a She'd degree. been a teacher for 10 years and you're at a, this point. A teacher for 10 years. Yeah. You have more world experience. And yet this 16 year old outsmarted two of you. Yeah, I sure. So, okay, so here's where it gets a little weird. So the charges were made in two different parishes, like so sort of uh, different counties. So Dufresne, who is the daughter of another longtime judge in that parish. So her father was a circuit judge in that parish. Jeez. Um, she pled not guilty to the felony charges in Jefferson Parish. And the judge ruled in her favor, stating that the lack of evidence and credibility from the witness, basically, the police didn't investigate well enough. So they dropped those charges in that parish. Yeah. So she couldn't convict on those charges. But uh, Dufresne did plead guilty to one felony count of obscenity in St. Charles Parish. And she was ordered to pay a fine of $1,000, serve three years on probation, and she had to spend three months seeking help at a mental health facility. She did have to register as a sex offender in the St. Charles Parish. Um, and she, of course, lost her teaching license. So did the other teacher. So as for Respess, all charges against her were eventually dropped by the judge oh. due to lack of evidence. She actually maintained that she did not have consensual sex with this boy and was innocent. Right. I, I don't know how the teacher and the boy would have showed up over at your apartment if you had yeah. no knowledge of any of, of anything. I don't know. So there also was a lawsuit against the school and the school district by the boy's parents. What and did they have to do with any of it? Well, they they were saying he was scarred. Oh. He, he suffered emotional, physical damage. I'm sure there was a settlement that was reached, but I can't find anything yeah. on it. I'm sure it had to be like a closed, closed matter. So, but wait, there's more oh, a, a no. year, not even a year after this, another teacher from that same high school was arrested for allegedly having a year long affair, meaning it was happening at the same time as this other shit was happening. Oh. <laughs> what is in the water? I was going to say it's uh, Louisiana. I don't it's know. The cafeteria food. Oh Lord. Yeah. So this teacher was having a year long affair with a female student. So 27 year old Kimberly Knockin, whose father Dennis was on the school board. He was the president oh, of the school board at the time of the incident. Her mother also is a teacher in the area. 
So she was a geography teacher at the same high school. She was arrested on 12 counts of carnal knowledge of a juvenile and sexual conduct between a teacher and a female student. Of course, she was suspended without pay as, you know, was done with the other two. Apparently, one of the teen's family members, like, reported concerns of a relationship and the school had to investigate. So Nakin was 26 at the time. The student was 16, but turned 17. So some of it was considered consensual. Yeah. She also pled guilty to the charges. She wasn't trying to, I mean, she, I'm sure she saw what happened with these other two teachers. And because that was an ongoing thing that they were dealing with when her issue came out, they had already been arrested and charged and were waiting trial. So she um, pled guilty. She was ordered to serve five years on probation and to register as a sex offender for 15 years. Sweet. Yeah. I just, I don't get, I don't know, but sure. I, what is, what is sexually appealing about a young child, like um, a 16, 17 year old child that's, for an that's adult? That's a whole other issue for a whole nother day. Right. So yeah. So Shelly Dufresne, she was married and had three children Ew. and engaged in that with him. Ew. Yeah. It's crazy. All nasty. It is nasty. All right. So. Anyone want to guess where I last what the fuck comes from? Florida. 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 Yeah. yeah. Florida always comes through for us. So I'm going to try to give all the other states throughout, you know, the what the fuck shows that are coming up. I'm going to try to give them a fair shake when it comes to what the fucks. But Florida has just reached for the stars when it comes to the fuckery. I just ask and it gives. It, it, I don't even have to ask anymore. Yeah. It just It just gives. It comes to me. It's like Google already knows that I want to know. All right. So last year, residents in Flagler County, Florida, got an early Easter surprise in their mailbox when plastic Easter eggs began showing up. So over a four day period, people began finding these little eggs that were filled with some odd items. Among some of the items in the eggs were found one goldfish cracker, just one. (laughs) Some wadded up squares of toilet paper. Yes. Amazing. Oh, God. A powdered drink mix, like a the Skittles drink mix that Ew. you can. Yeah. Wait, what? Um, some religious. Like water. Yeah. It's like a That's powdery a drink. Yeah. yeah. Skittles? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Olivia, yeah. please don't we don't, search we don't need don't Olivia, Olivia to know this. <laughs> <laughs> I should never have said it. Yeah. <laughs> should have said Kool-Aid or something. I should have. Yeah. There was Kool-Aid. It was Kool-Aid. You don't <laughs> want none of this after I tell you what else was found, okay? So then there was some religious information and community, I don't, I don't know, information. And then best of all, there was some porn. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So, yes, there was a pamphlet that accompanied these eggs with pornographic images along with, you know, a a couple of other religious things. Happy. Is this a cult? It's no. It's a cry for weaker. Yes. She just started. (laughs) She probably found like something outside of like a dollar store that someone (laughs) threw away. And it was like a ton of eggs, plastic eggs. She's sitting at her house and she's just stuffing them for from whatever is in her house. Yeah, I mean, come no. on. <laughs> Good story, but no. Serious. <laughs> no. So, okay. So, concerned residents began calling in the local sheriff's office after finding these eggs. And after getting some home security video, deputies were then able to find the person responsible. So, on April 9th, 2020, April Sistoni, who's 42 years old, was arrested after she placed between 200 and 400 plastic Easter eggs in different neighborhoods in their mailboxes. On April 8th alone, Who between has 200 and 400 eggs. Who has the time? She made the time. She, she left. She her, said, I have time today. She, she left her job early to did, go and do these over these four days. She, she, really like, she would leave early from her job to go and do these. What the oh hell? Why? So, okay, I'm, I'm coming to that. Oh, God. So she gets pulled over and just a routine stop um, on a parkway. When asked what in the world she's doing, she freely admitted to distributing the pamphlets and the eggs. And she claimed she had a business license and was, quote, a church. She was just <laughs> trying to church. spread the truth. Right. Period. Period. About a goldfish? One and, goldfish. And One goldfish. Right. But if you think of it, like the sign for Jesus, it looks like a fish. 
Don't even try right? to make logic of no. this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get in her head for a second. That was all I wanted was just a second just to. Yeah. OK, so you can watch the body cam footage of, from her arrest is is very interesting. At one point, she states, quote, explain to the church why they are not speaking to I because something happened to I and related to God. End quote. She referred to herself as I. She went on a lengthy homophobic rant, claiming oh. that homosexuals were allowed to teach at churches and that they were changing the Bible. Oh, honey. Because oh. they care. They care so much about changing the Bible. I, you would not, I never, please. And then also had some information about magnetic fields. Of course. For the always, deputies before always. they arrested her. I, I remember Jesus's, uh, you know, sermon on magnetic fields. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Certainly, she obviously was in need of some mental health help. But in the footage, she also claims that she's like not, quote, a fanatic. She's her state of mind is clear. Mm -hmm. She was just on this mission to to get this truth out. Apparently, she's in the porn. So she made this this these images herself on her personal computer. Only fans who <laughs> she printed it <laughs> off at home using PowerPoint. Period. <laughs> so one family who received an egg reported that the graphic image was of a woman having sex with two men. Oh. And then above that was an image of one that showed Jesus nailed to the cross and being stabbed by the Roman soldier. Um, okay. Yeah. Very what? concerning images. They were worried, you know, because of, there's quite a few children in their home that could have checked the mailbox and found this stuff. Oh. And they were like, what, what in the hell? If our 10 year old had gone and checked the mail instead of the aunt going and checking the mail, like, oh my God. And especially that's an Easter egg. You know what I mean? Right. And the kid would have been like, oh, the not, Easter bunny. And it's a bunny. week before Easter. It was and actually like Good Sunday. And he the egg and was like, what the hell? What is this picture? <laughs> Right. Mom. <laughs> what is this? Jesus is above this lady who's naked with two guys. I don't know. Mommy, what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Why is she naked? So April Sistoni was held without bail on 11 counts of disturbing obscene material, driving with a suspended license and violating the stay at home order. April oh, is perfectly fine. Oh, she's fine. April confirmed that she knew her license was suspended um, from not ch paying child support. Obviously, your children are not with oh. you. I it's that is a whole can of worms that I I don't even want to know why her children are not with her. But she wasn't paying her child support. She had been arrested a month prior to this on a warrant for failure to appear in court because she was also arrested that other time for driving with a suspended license. Well, she can't even show up for her kids, but you want her to show up in court. No. But she can distribute this porn. Yeah. She got the time for that. She's got the time for that. Heck yeah. Yeah. So from what I can tell, most of the charges actually were dismissed, oh. which really upsets me. And she, it was chalked up to like serve time served. Basically, she had a few months in jail and they chalked it up to like time served. Thank you, Florida. Yeah. I couldn't find anything that stated she was getting help for like, you know, an obvious mental health concern. Yes. I, Yeah. Like Ladies it was in court uh, mandated, nothing. Mental illness is not something to joke about. It's it's not. And I don't want to make light of her situation because obviously she, she needs the help. She really does. But I, what the hell? If I opened up an egg and found this one goldfish cracker, <laughs> some tissues. And then I got to thinking, what are the tissues for? I don't know. I don't even want to sp speculate on what you would use those tissues for. I'm going to say she dipped them in holy water and decided to give them to everybody. <laughs> okay. Or sure. she sneezed in them. I didn't I have a know. garbage can. I was like, uh, just put it in the egg. But she t would take like, I don't know. She took like a couple of squares of tissue off the toilet paper roll. And I don't know. She's sharing. She's sharing. Well, at that time, too, people were in need of toilet paper. So maybe that's what she was thinking. Oh, I mean, this was coronavirus. She's yeah. She tried real hard. She tried to get her information and her truth out there. And, you know, people weren't having it. They can't see that. Can't see her vision and where she was going with that. So, yeah. And there there was like a concern with um, people calling in, like, is somebody trying to spread uh, COVID? Maybe the <laughs> tissue is a used tissue from somebody who's trying to spread COVID and, and get everybody sick and... 
I, I mean, I wouldn't put it past somebody, but who would do, who's going to do that? Who's worried about that? The governor. How long? The governor. How long would the virus <laughs> even stay alive? Like, um, no, I yeah. think it said some hours. Surface. I think it did say some, some good amount of time, like, a, a. Yeah, but by the time you get to the egg, I don't know. You're gonna. I mean, who knows? Oh no, I have know. COVID. It's a COVID egg. It just is funny because if you watch the body cam footage, you can see her. She's got a bag of her pamphlets, like they're kind of rolled up in little scrolls, <laughs> and she just like hands the bag, kind of like pulls it up, and is like showing the office, the deputy, like, yeah, those are that's mine. Yeah, I did that. I. Could you imagine being an, a police officer and, or a sheriff or something and somebody just hands you their bag of, porn. of pornographic images Heck yeah! and religious information? It's, yeah. I, I, to be there, to be there would be amazing, I think. All right. So with that, we're done with our first What the Fuck episode for season three. For anyone new here, these will be released weekly on Wednesdays from now until October 20th. So we're gearing up for some big things in the next few months. Make sure you guys are following us on social media for any announcements that we have. And head over to our website to join our mailing list and get that merch. Other than that, we'll be back next week for more fuckery. Until then, stay safe and stay out of the woods. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.